Hi everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. Have you ever created a beautiful piece of artwork? You want to share it on Facebook or on Instagram, but the photo is really disappointing. Today I have some handy tips on how to improve your photos using the Procreate app. For this project you'll need an iPad and the Procreate app. I think I paid about 12 Australian dollars for mine when I bought it, but I'm not quite sure what it is these days. It's well worth it. If you have an Apple Pencil, it'll make life easier, but it doesn't matter if you don't. You can use the Procreate app on any iPad. However, you can't use the Apple Pencil on all iPads. So if you have an older version, you can still use your finger or a stylus and still get the same results. If you're completely new to Procreate, I do have another video here on YouTube which is aimed at beginners and a couple more on Skillshare. So I'll leave a link to those below this video. Open the Procreate app and once we do that, we come to our gallery. Click on that little plus in the corner and then on the folder so we can create a custom canvas. Now I'm going to change it to inches and I'm choosing two inches by two inches and that's because it's a little bit smaller than our normal tile size. And you notice the DPI there says 300. I just normally keep it to that because it's a good size to have if you want to print out something. I'll just reduce the canvas a little bit and go up to the wrench tool. Here if I click on the add and insert photo it takes me to my camera roll and I can select the photo that I want. Now you can see that it doesn't quite fit so we can click on fit to screen and also move it with our fingers if we like. But you must realize that anytime we enlarge a photo it does decrease the quality of the photo. For this exercise I'm showing you how to make our tile look more square. So if we head up to the wrench tool and click on canvas and then drawing guide and edit drawing guide we can now see a grid. I'm in 2D grid so I can make it more opaque and thicker. I can also mess around with the colour. There's a slider at the bottom also which says grid size and I can increase or decrease the size of those squares but I'm quite happy with where they sit. I have a nice row of squares around the edge that I can adjust to. Now I hit on the transform tool and it's on uniform and that will make it, if I try and make it bigger and smaller, it'll keep it all the same. But if I head over to Distort, now I can play around with each of the corners. And I can only do this one step at a time. So I'm lining up this edge, and now I'll go to the other edge. And just get it one way, and then I can go in the other direction and lift it up so that it fits inside those squares. And that's moved a little bit so I can just adjust it. You can see if I try and do it two ways it uh, has a bit of a mind of its own. So if I go one way horizontally and then vertically I end up getting it where I want it to be. I'll click off that but if I look a little bit more closely I can see it dips a little bit at the top. So to rectify that I'll hit back on my transform tool and then click on warp and if I push that up a little bit I you can see how it stretches it and I'm happy with that now but you can see in the background I have two white triangles let's erase the background hit the eraser button inking and studio pen you can select whatever brush you are more comfortable with so I'll get 
the size a little bit thicker and take away most of the background. If you've cut your tile out of cardboard, you might have a, a really straight edge. And something we can use is the snap tool. So if I draw a line and at the end hold it down, it'll snap into a straight line and then go to the edit guide and we get those two little blue circles and I can adjust where I want that line to be. So if I put it right up against the edge and you can see the Zentangle tile isn't completely straight. It has all the little bumps that um, characterize it. So I want to keep those. So I'm not going and cutting off all the edge. I'm leaving those little bits of brown lines that you can see. I'll take off the surplus here and then I can go back around, zoom in and treat those little bumps a little bit more closely and so that way I retain the character of the tile. Zoom right in so that you get to see all the pixels. And I'll reduce the size of my brush. Now I can go a little bit more closely and really get up and get in and remove just pixel by pixel almost. And that way I can keep all those little lumps and bumps. I'll just speed up that process a little bit for you. Now I have a completely white background. So I'm going to head up to my layers, duplicate this layer, switch off the top layer, and then highlight the bottom one. Now I'll go up to my color picker. And if I click on twice down the bottom of the black, that'll give me a pure black. And I'm going to fill that whole tile with black. I'm not very concerned about still being able to see the green in the middle because that won't be affected. So with that highlighted, I go up to my transform tool. I'll make sure it's on uniform and magnetics are on. So I can nudge that down to create a shadow. It's a little bit wider in one direction, so I'll just adjust that again. Click off that, go to Adjustments and Gaussian Blur. And if I move my pen along, you can see how it blurs that shadow. So I move it to where I want it, but it's still a little bit dark. So if I go to the layer, click on the N button, which means normal, you can see this opacity button. And I can just reduce the opacity a little bit here and it's lightening up that shadow so that looks much better. If you don't want your background white, we can go up to the layers, add a new layer, then drag that layer down underneath. So we want the background to be right at the bottom. Now with that highlighted, I can go to my color picker Choose a colour, any colour. Then I'll drag that down into my background. And there's lots of other things we can do, you know, if you play around with a lot of your brushes and I'll just turn off those layers and let's experiment a little bit. We'll have a look at some different brushes that we can use. Um, I don't think I'll choose one of these. I might go to Vintage and that looks interesting. So let's see what that does. Now I've still got green so I'll change it to black and see what that does. I've 
turn the opacity down slightly and that's just an example of something that you can do you can change the color I'll put my tile back on there I don't really like that blue so I'll go back to that green color and drop that in and so you can really do all kinds of different effects in the background I'll turn that off and if I want to put my original kind of background back on there I've taken a photo of the desk so I'll bring that in and I'll turn that around and enlarge it a little bit and it's a lot lighter than I wanted so we can play around with that so if I go to that adjustment tool select hue saturation and brightness I'll just make that a little bit darker and then I'll increase the saturation and that looks a lot better so now I'll drag that down underneath my tile and that almost looks like the original picture and I can export that and save it into my camera roll and it's ready now to add to Facebook or Instagram while we're here another option that we do have if I click back onto my original tile layer then go up to adjustments select hue saturation and brightness again and we can play around with these controls just experiment and see what they do the color one is interesting you can completely change the color of the leaves once we change that color say to blue we can further play around with it and get it back to blue okay and click off it then go back and color balance now there's a little menu at the end and we can change the sh shadows the mid-tones or the highlights if we play around with the highlights it's going to change the color of the white background so we probably don't want to use that one but just have a bit of fun go to each of the, la the levels and um, play around see what you can come up with it's just a fun thing to do if you wanted to change the color of whatever you've created if you want to fix up some imperfections on your tile I'll show you how to do that with another example so here I'll zoom in and you can see I've overlapped a little bit of white so if I press down with my finger and that, that brings up the color drop, dropper and that will give me the exact color so I'll choose a brush actually I might even use an airbrush and then just oh that's a little bit too big reduce the size and then I can just go in and touch up those little bits that I've accidentally colored in white and you might also find I know my eyesight is going and sometimes when I zoom in on something I find all these little gaps that I've left when I've been coloring in black and you can fix them up too so go ahead and touch it up a little bit if I go to the color picker and create a pure black and then just touch it up it can be a little bit too stark and it doesn't look natural it looks like it's been touched up so I tend to not do that that's why I use the eyedropper tool and um, it gives me the same pigments that are already on the page and so if you just do it a little bit of a, at a time you can see when you look closely it's not just all solid black you've got varying shades and so as I go along I'll just keep getting that eyedropper tool and that way it keeps it more closely to what's already on the page 
There's no point in touching up a tile if it looks obvious. It's especially useful if you get some little black marks on the outside of your tile. So I'll use that colour picker and just touch that up, almost pixel at a time. And then it's not noticeable. So once I zoom out, you can't even notice that I've been in there and touched that up. So I'll speed through now and fix up my little imperfections. I didn't do this, but I should mention that before I go ahead and do all these touch-ups, it's handy to create a new layer. That way you're not damaging the original photograph. Um, so if you, if you do something that doesn't look quite right, if it's on a separate layer, it's much easier to just delete that and you still have your original photograph underneath. I'm pretty happy with that, but I've noticed I have a bluish kind of shadow on the right hand side of my tile. If I go up to my Select tool and make sure it's on freehand, I can just draw around selecting that area. And once I get to the end, I'm then going to click on Feather and just slide that along a little bit. It'll give me a softer edge. So I'll pick up that color with using the eyedropper tool. Make sure that the selection tool stays on. That way we're only treating that little area that I selected. Select the airbrush tool and just color that in. If it's too obvious, you can reduce the opacity and size of the brush. And you can see now it's just coloring in and that shadow is less noticeable. So I'll go ahead and remove the background. Notice this time I'm not enlarging the photo. I'm just adjusting the edges. I'm now going to head over to a website called pixabay.com. Here you can select free, royalty free images. And so I'm putting in tabletop and all kinds of images come up. So I'm going to scroll through these until I find a nice background that I might put underneath my tile. And uh, here's one with a desk with some tulips on it. So first of all I'll select that and it'll take me to a page and that way I can make sure that it's a free download and I'm just selecting it by pressing down and saving the image. You could download different sizes of that image. So now I'm going to import that into my design and I'll make it larger and move it along a little bit so that I have more table space and I'm quite happy with that so now I'll go up and drag that layer underneath my tile so you can see my tile doesn't look quite right at the moment so I'll do what I did before duplicate that layer make the bottom layer black turn the top one back on and go up to my transform tool and drag that bottom layer out. This time I'm taking it in a different direction, the same direction as where the tulip's actual shadow is. And then go back up to adjustments, use my gouache and blur and soften that shadow. Now I'm going to squish those two layers together to make them on one layer, that way I can move them together. 
so I'll tilt that a little bit and get it to where I want it to be and I'm reducing the opacity so that I can see through it because I'm now going to go up to my eraser tool and select a brush that's fairly opaque and go in and just erase you can see the tile so as I erase it the tulip is now being able to be seen so go very carefully around the edges I'll just zoom in a little bit and reduce my brush size and then completely erase wherever the tulip is sitting above the tile Now that I've done all the edges, I'm going to put that opacity back up and so I can make sure that I haven't missed any bits. And there we have it. Now it looks a lot more natural. So there's the before picture and our after picture. I hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, do that. That way you don't miss out on future videos. And if you want to join my Facebook group, there is a link below this video. Until next week, stay safe and bye for now. You can see more of my videos if you head over to my YouTube channel or if you click on the links on the screen, there's more there. And don't forget that subscribe button.